Praise the Lord. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is so good. And, uh, and we are so blessed, and I'm so happy that I'm here today. And uh, we'll go back to South Carolina after the service. That's why I'll take this opportunity to stand up here. And I want to say thank you for everyone. And uh, we are so blessed here. And I believe this is not an accident that we came here. And I believe this is a divine purpose. And uh, God is so great. He's merciful. He's full of love. And he loves us so much. And uh, I'm so excited because I believe we will never say goodbye because we will see each other in eternity. And uh, I'm excited because the, uh, while we're singing today, I can imagine that in heaven we will sing, each, we will sing to the Lord in his throne and uh, every nation, every tribe will come, every knee will bow in his, in his uh, majesty. Praise the Lord. God is great. I would like to share something because uh, before in my life, uh, I know the Lord, I know, I, know, I know Jesus Christ, but I don't know why before because I'm keeping on, you know, I go to church after going to church, Sunday, Monday, all right, Tuesday, all right, in the Wednesday, I mean, I can comp compromise again. I'm like, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. And after I, I, I ask forgiveness, I will do the, sin, the same sin again. And I'll say, Lord, forgive me again, please. I know that God will forgive me, but I believe it's not his will that I will not be free from that bondage. I know that it's God's will that we, we will be free because he came here to free us. He came here not to, you know, if, if we have like any bondage in our lives, vices, lust, anything. His power, it says here, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And if, if God is with us, if Jesus Christ is our Lord and he will help us, we can be a conqueror. Actually, we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. He conquered it. It is finished. All we need to do is believe and trust him and accept his gift. And, we, and he will give us the power to obey him. And I believe that it's not his will that we are keep on sinning. Like after, after this service, we'll go out, be, I mean, be good. And after maybe a few hours, did the same thing again. That's not the will of the Lord. It says here in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. It says here. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit was is con what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with, with each other, so that you are not to do whatsoever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. It's very clear instructions here from the Bible. We all know that we are in our flesh, human. We are in our body, and our body is weak. Even though how, how long you've been going to church, but if we yield to temptation, for sure, we will fall. Because this, we have our human nature. That's why the, the Word of God says, it's advising us, we need to walk by the Spirit. How can we walk by the Spirit? It's very, the answer is very clear. How did Jesus walk in this world? As we all know, he knew no sin. He is perfect. But you know what? He is, when he was here, he is human. He can commit sin, but he did not. But why? Because he trusted his father. And he did his part as the son of God. As we all know, 
if we look at his lifestyle, it's very different if we look at our lifestyle, even though we're Christians. And uh, as we all know, if, if we will review what is life here, what he speaks, what he listens to, what he eats, it's opposite in what we do. But it's not too late. As we all know, Jesus fasted for 40 days. But why? He fasted because he wants to deny himself. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And after he fasted, the devil came and tempted him. If you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Let's look at this first. Why did Satan tempt him about bread? I know if Jesus made that stone into bread, he will not sin. It's not sin to eat bread. Am I right? Is it sin to eat bread? But why did Satan tempt him about bread? Of course, as we all know, the first temptation is in the garden, and it's all about food. The first, the first instruction that God gave, do not eat this fruit. Why? What's all about eating? As we all know, we are working in this world. We are, people are striving to get money because of stomach, because of food. People fight. People kill. People rob because they want money. Why? For food. And that's why if our stomach is our God, it's dangerous. Jesus is our God. And that's why, uh, that's why Jesus fasted. He denied himself. And, and uh, if, if we review his words, we cannot spot even a single worthless words in his mouth. We cannot spot even, for example, Jesus has a TV before. He, do he, I mean, will he watch movies like we are watching or not? Or let's say this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. Walking in the Spirit. Of course, we are in flesh, but we are instructed to walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is like, of course, walking with Jesus and doing things edifying for our spirit. Of course, reading the Bible, praying. And to be honest with you, we have much time in other things than reading the Bible. If we count our time reading the Bible once a day or one day or praying, maybe we have a lot of time watching TV. Watching TV with, uh, with watching TV, I mean movies that will not edify our spirit is not walking in the spirit. And uh, listening to gossip, strife, it's not edifying in our spirit. That's not walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit is feeding our spirit in Jesus' name. And it says here in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Okay, no, no. Matthew chapter 6 first. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. It says here, The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Now, it says in another version, if your eye is single, of course, we need our eyes to be single in Jesus' name. In Jesus. And... It's in another version, if your eye is full of darkness, if your eye is bad, your body will be full of darkness. Now, what is bad? We all know that Midnight Cry Ministries, DCBC Ministries, we have media ministry. We are reaching people through media. The Lord is working. The Spirit of God is working through, our, through, through this camera here. Go uh, down to their television. And the Lord is touching them. But I know Satan do the same. 
Satan used media. Satan used television. But what is bad? What? What? I mean, what? What's this? Your, if your body is full of, if uh, if your if your eyes is bad, your body will be full of darkness. Now, what is bad? We all, maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm not watching pornography. I'm not watching. I'm not watching dirty stuff in television. I'm. I'm just. I. I just love to watch any 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 another another movies. But we all know that hatred is sin. We all know that adultery is sin. We know that fornication is sin. We know that um, homosexual is sin. Am I right? If we watch movie that supports adultery, we are supporting adultery. If we watch movie that supports hatred, I've seen a lot of movie that supports, supports hatred. I will not mention, mention titles. That, that a movie that promotes hatred, you know, a movie like uh, 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 a man wants to kill his enemy because his enemy killed his family. You know that kind of movie? It's, if we look at it, it's, oh, it's fine. It's not porn. But you know what? It promotes hatred. And if, if you watch movie, a love story that promotes fornication, even though, they, they, even though the movie did not show nakedness or, or, or porn, but they are promoting adultery. We are supporting fornication. Or even though the movie has um, promotes homosexual, you'll say, oh, I'm just watching. I will not do what they do. But the same thing. You are supporting that kind of movie. Video games. What kind of video games do you play? Is it hatred? Is it promoting violence? I don't know if Jesus will play the Xbox. I don't think so. Maybe golf and Xbox, but... <laughs> but... <laughs> but wasting time on it? I don't think so. But we need to be careful what we watch and what we... Because I believe input determines output. What you put in your mind, even though how prayerful you are, but you're watching that kind of things, it will, that's, it will reflect your actions. Because what you, think becomes, what you think becomes your action. What you act becomes your attitude. Your attitude becomes your character. Your character determines your future. That's why the Bible says, renew your, renew your mind. Think about heavenly things. Think about Jesus. Fix your eyes unto him. It's about thinking about him every minute. Amen? It's not too late. Me, myself, I'm guilty. That's why before I want to have girlfriend, you know why before I want to have girlfriend? Because I always watch love story. I, I say, oh, I want to be like them. Oh, so, wow. And another love story, oh, I want to be like this, happily ever after. That's why I'm going out in the house. Let me look, let me find for a girl. You know, because media is controlling the minds of the young people about love life. The love life of the media in the world is opposite in the love life of the Lord that he wrote. People is following what media is telling. The media is telling us that if you have rich, if you have big house, if you have a lot of cars, you are rich. That's the world. That's media. But if you read the Bible, if you have Jesus, you are rich. Opposite. Jesus was born in the manger. He is the king of kings, the prince of peace, but why God allowed him to be born there? He wants us to know that it's not about material things. It's about who he is. He is the king of kings. The world is telling, I mean, opposite against this, against his word. That's why we need to walk in the spirit. And it says there, if your eyes is bad, your body will be full of darkness. If you look in bad things all the time, your body will be full of darkness. And that's not walking in the spirit. If I watch, if I watch a movie that promotes violence, I'm not yet sinning. I'm still watching. 
but it cannot help my spirit. Just like a scale, spiritual things and flesh. In the morning, you prayed, okay? You read the Bible, okay? After reading the Bible, watch TV. Okay? After watch TV, talk with friends with nonsense things. <laughs> You're not sinning yet. You are not sinning. Maybe Sunday, <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> next Sunday, absent. <laughs> now you're not sinning, but when trials come, temptation comes, you cannot stand because your spirit is weak. I mean, your, 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 your flesh is weak and you're feeding your flesh more than your spirit. But if we discipline ourselves by the power of Jesus, if the spirit is heavier, what trials, problems will come, we will stand up in Jesus' name. That's why many people are backsliding. No time for God. It's not too late, brothers and sisters. Before, if I listen love songs, you know what? Too bad, but... I'll tell you this. Before, in our car, I have a lot of collections, CDs, love songs. Air Supply, Chicago. I like that American songs, you know. But I realize every time I listen to them, I listen to a love song, it can affect me. I become lonely. Every time I listen to love songs, I become lonely and lustful. Every time I listen to rock, worldly music, I became angry right away. There's something in music. Satan is using it. But you know what? Music is for Jesus alone. He created music, but Lucifer is ugly. He stole the music. He created his own counterfeit. That's why we Christians, we need to stand up for God's music and God's movie. We are in TV ministry. We will support Christian ministry. We will not support nonsense movies. It says here in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word that the em for every empty word they have spoken. Wow. For by words you will be acquitted, and by words you will be condemned. I'll read it again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty words. For every empty words, we are all guilty of that. Empty words. It says here in uh, Jeremiah chapter 15. You know what? When I pray to the Lord, Lord, I want you to use me. And he showed me this verse, Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 19. He say, it says here, Therefore this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not Worthless words, you will be my spokesman. When I read this, I, was, I asked forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. All my life, I've been saying worthless words. But it says here, we need to utter worthy, not worthless words. You will be my spokesman. Now, we think that only bad words is bad. Like F word, the S word. But you know what? We speak of worthless things a lot of times. Useless jokes, nonsense jokes. Or if you say, oh my gosh, that's useless. Gosh, I mean, if you read the Bible, Jesus never said, oh my gosh. <laughs> Even you read the Bible, you, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot re read here that Peter, Paul, 
wrote nonsense words that, oh my gosh, the devil ran away. <laughs> you know? I mean, we are all guilty of that. But it will not help at, and it will not edify our spirit. It's worthless. And he, God will judge us in every worthless words that's come out from our mouth. And if you say, oh my, G-O-D, that's blasphemy. Please do not say that. Blasphemy, it's a serious sin in God's eyes. For example, I'll use the name of JP. If I, can, if I, if, if I step the poop of the deer, you know, and, I, and, and when I step on it, and I'll say, oh my, JP. <laughs> JP will not be happy. JP will not be happy. I use, I drag his name on the poop. <laughs> and we are saying, oh my, G-O-D. That's bad. But it's not too late. God is ready to forgive us today. Praise the Lord. I'm excited because it's not too late. And uh, it says here, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. See? I'll read it again, brothers and sisters. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out from your mouth, but only what is helpful. Helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. We need our mouths to preserve, to preserve words that can help one another. We do not, we, I mean, we, we, we will stop speaking negative words. We need to speak life every day. We need to speak life every day. Not death, but life. Jesus never spoke about death. I mean, Jesus never spoke nonsense words, but he spoke about life every second he speaks. Every second he speaks, it's all about life. We cannot read here the whole book. No wordless words. That's why it's not too late. We will walk in the Spirit and we will not gratify our sinful nature. We have a decision. God, God gave us will. You know, Adam and Eve, they were perfect. Adam and Eve were perfect. God made them perfect, but God gave them will. God didn't want them to eat the fruit. But they ate it because they chose, they chose to eat it. That's why we have a decision today. And the power of the Holy Spirit will help us to walk in the Spirit daily. Our eyes, our ears, our mouth, what we touch, what we listen, is it edifying us? What we watch, is it helping us? Is it by the Spirit or by the flesh? I remember Samson. Samson was very powerful. No one can defeat him. He killed thousand by a jaw of an ass. You know, in the line, you know, killing everybody by a jawbone. That's, I mean, that's God. A human being cannot do that. But it's the Lord's power who was in Samson killing all his enemies, protecting the nation. But you know what? Only one woman defeated him. One woman. That's why we need to beware, especially the men. Even how strong you are, women can kill us. No, not all. No, I'm not talking about you here. I mean, lustful women. 
we need to beware. If we watch TV, you know what? We are human beings, man. If we watch lustful things, it's, even though it's not pornography, but it, it, you know, there are many programs in television like comedy, but their humor is green, green jokes, sex, but it's not porn, but it talks about sex, you know? It can affect our body just like Samson. Samson was blinded. The hair was cut. And he was like, no more strength because of one woman. The Lord allowed it to be written here so we can read. So we will be aware that we need to look our eyes into Jesus. We need to hug Jesus every day. To trust him because without him, we can do nothing. And we need to trust him. To God be the glory.